you know what? It's not worth using the expensive stuff on. Here's to you, delicious party. You were a show, I guess. <sighs> Our final episode opened with, of course, Yui rescuing Fenno from, honestly, I don't know where, the edge of time and space, I think? <laughs> No, no, let's not try and make this a good finale at this point. She tried to comfort him by saying that Ginger was always trying to protect his smile by doing something. Like, did he always know that his student was going to turn to the dark side? I mean, if that's the case, then why not try and talk things out with him rather than making a thousand different precautions as though you anticipated that he was going to try and take over the world? There's a simple explanation for that. It's sad when even the Tiki head is a bear mentor. But yeah, she talked no jutsu, the guy who tried to instate martial law against an entire planet, back to the good guy side. Anyone else kind of missing the simp seahorse? <laughs> Alright, forget about the infinity joke from last time, and let's just try and end this long ass counting gag properly. <laughs> Okay, so then- You done? Alright. So- Never, ever, again! Also, I'm pretty sure most of, if not all of those closed stores can't just reopen, but hey, why worry about consequences at this point in the show? But yeah, we think got a montage featuring all of the one-off side characters coming in, including the princess who would have made for a better pink lead. Also, shouldn't this dude have gotten the guillotine by now? But yeah, I guess it was nice if only to see the seemingly neurodivergent cures become more sociable, while Amane was pretty much the same. Yeah, I almost feel like we forgot something in regards to her. Ah, uh, yes sir. Looks like there's suddenly a giant ribbon on the statue that's kind of throwing off balance and oh, it's falling. Here it comes. Meanwhile, the Nogomi Diner was serving a vegetarian bento because only now they're considering healthy eating after a few weeks of nothing but carbs. Then, I guess it was also meant to show Komi Komi's development into liking peppers. I mean, it was certainly more development than this pepper had with his relationships. All of this was being observed by Rosemary, who, you know, after watching the movie for this series recently, I think this is what should happen to a guy who watches over little girls all the time. <laughs> but yeah, not too surprisingly, he also revealed that this is going to be the episode when they were going to part ways for good, with no way of making contact ever again, not even for a cheap crossover with some other Precure teams every so often. Anyway, they also had a different celebration to head to in Cook Kingdom. There, they also returned the recipe bowl and hopefully to be burned so they could never be used for evil again. And Monbei was officially reinstated as a cook fighter, along with regaining his stone that had been nerfed so that now it could only be used to travel between the worlds. Wait, they could have done that the whole time! Pretty sure 90% of it was thanks to Ginger, but hey, that's just semantics. And the energy fairies were quote unquote promoted to being guardians of the recipe bone, which the pre-cure was shocked by, and I'm honestly surprised that the narrator didn't chime in to explain how they were feeling. But hey, no time to think about that, as they had an outdoor party to attend, complete with a massive cake pulled in by one of the most criminally underused characters in this show. Seriously, of all of these side character interactions in this episode, why didn't they let Sephiri interact with her former mentor in this final episode? Oh right, because this was supposed to be her most important contribution to this episode. <laughs> Oh no, you can't light this cake that you brought outside in the middle of broad daylight. Yeah, I'm sorry, what's the problem here? But yeah, in place of a cool extra boss fight where Sora could have made her early bird cameo, instead, our superheroine's final contribution to this series was lighting candles that would be barely visible. A completely pointless gesture that contributed almost nothing to the grand scheme of things. Hmm, pretty much describes this season perfectly. 
We also learned that Spiriter, you know, the character who spent most of the season being a mindless droid, had been reprogrammed for good. We. Oh, and also Pom Pom and Mandragon regained their movie human forms, also thanks to Ginger's device, I think. I mean, I guess this is a little better than how they got it in that movie, as at least it came from a significant character rather than just some random robots. But still, it doesn't really show any growth on their part, which, okay, kind of matches up with Kome Kome, so I guess it works in that sense. As for the other antagonists, I will admit, I actually appreciate that they didn't just get off scot-free and were now essentially serving their time for committing grand larceny and terrorism. I will still say, they did my boy's narcissist story arc dirty. Again, if his problem was being a picky eater, then maybe have him eat stuff that not just about anyone can enjoy, like chocolate strawberry cake. Oh boy, I've got a lot more to say about this character, but let's save that for the overview. Yep, that's still a dumb salute that calls back to those guys from WW2. Though, at least it was made up for by legit the best scene in this episode, where Rosemary rightfully said he'd never forgive his old friend Fennel for what he did, but still, as his friend, wanted to make sure he paid his dues to society. It was honestly an excellent scene, even though again, it did highlight how the show was kind of taken over by the cook fires by the end. Later, he told the Cures that he had always dreamt about being them, even seen projections of them in the flowers, and wait, wasn't Amani supposed to be the gold cure of this team? Toy, make up your mind already, jeez. But yeah, this is the big tearful farewell scene that I'll express my feelings in the closing thoughts. With that, our series ended with Yui saying that she wanted to travel the world to see all of the Maniki Nekos, the statues that were mostly the creation of Japan. I mean, a few of them are here in Hawaii, but you'll probably have a hard time finding them in places like Canada. Takumi, just give up. Just give up at this point. And after promoting some more carbo loading, god, this girl's gonna be dying back before she enters high school, may as well close things out with one more for the road. And of course, we then got the traditional early bird cameo and baton pass scene with Sora, though surprisingly, Crunchyroll included it this year. Don't know what happened last year with Tropical Rouge, but I will say this new superheroine at least left a strong first impression, even literally taking a page out of the successor of All Might. So uh, yeah, we usually don't do this, but I gotta say, this end card by Kyoko Yufu is like really well done. I mean, there's like practically no wasted space, everyone is very well drawn and colored, and above all else, Fennel's face here really describes my mood after watching this whole series. Yeah, I honestly don't know what to say at this point. This series, especially by this final art, just became a drag to get through. Sure, it had few good moments throughout, but much of it, especially in this final episode, wasn't coming from our main heroines. All I'll say is that Sora might not be the heroine we deserve, but she is definitely the one we need right now. I think my biggest problem with this series is that while it presents a lot of ideas, it just doesn't execute most of them all that well due to poor planning and or writing. For instance, and while I find the cures laying a giant cake to be rather silly and anticlimactic for a final episode, I do think there's a right way of doing it, like not in broad daylight so that not even in animation it looks all that impressive. Meanwhile, while certain superfluous elements like all of the one-off side characters were revisited, we were left with a lot of unanswered questions like what were Ginger's plans and how much did he know about the threat that the Precure were going to face. But no, instead, they chose to focus on things that likely the head writer had a preference for. And while this episode wasn't written by Saoko Hirabayashi, and instead the one veteran writer of this show, Mutsumi Ito, it still feels like her fingerprints are all over this, with the cook fires, and especially Rosemary, getting the best scenes. And don't get me wrong, they were good scenes. I like that we actually end with the antagonists in prison and serving their terms, and the final farewell between the former brothers in arms was great. These are the kind of slightly more mature tales that I really do wish our main heroines had been afforded. 
And yet, as we see by the end of all of this, Amane hasn't really changed at all, likely because we never did get that backstory. And Yui, even after everything, is still concluding the series with one of the most rom com -y, will they won't they endings with Takumi. I honestly don't know why people ship these two. And then there's the energy fairies, who they tried to make a big deal about them parting ways, and yet like them gain their human forms from the movie, it just didn't feel earned as things were just happening to them, rather than them taking proactive steps to better themselves. But really, that's the main driving force of this show. Things just happen with little intervention from our actual protagonist, likely due to a lack of direction, or worse, interest from the writers. And if they're not interested, then well, I can't really feel anything when everyone parts ways. And thus, overall, for this episode and series at large, I'm just kind of left mostly with apathy, but also maybe just a little bit of hope for a true hero girl next season. And yet, we're still not quite done with this series, as on top of the usual overview, we've also got a movie review that will be coming out later this week in place of the usual Wednesday review. And if you want a quick preview of it, I will say it does a few things better than its source material, and I did genuinely enjoy it overall, but I also wouldn't rank it as one of my personal favorites of even the non-crossover films of this franchise. Still do look forward to it, and until then though, farewell for now my friends, and as is usual with these final episode reviews, I guess it's high time we change things up a little. Going a little more casual this year. Hey, we even got a new background.